Um, Felicia, I was wondering, um, with your script writing, you have these amazingly talented actors that you work with, and you see in the outtakes a lot of times they do a lot of different takes. How much of the show is true to script, and how much of it um, is improv, and do you ever write the script just leaving something like, Zabu says something funny here, or that has to do with something? Uh, yeah, so no, I don't write. Uh, I don't write gaps in the script like that. I do um, sometimes. I'll have a section where I'm like, "Hey, you can add a, a button here or something like that." And Zabu always like he has diarrhea of the mouse. So I mean, <laughs> <laughs> <in a good> <laughs> um, but he can't. Like sometimes I'm like I beat him to it. I was like, "Well, you would have improv this when you." And he's like. Phew. Because <laughs> you know, it's working with him for so long now, I can I can predict like kind of what he'll he'll do as his character, which is great as a writer. It's so much easier to like write things uh, for him. Uh, I would say that the script is is very locked. You know, like it's ninety five percent locked. We do have a read through, and sometimes I incorporate uh, improv during the read through. The thing about uh, the shoot, especially this last season, was that we had such a tight schedule. We had to shoot things like the first two episodes were shot the last of everything. So we shot very much out of order. And especially with the webcam stuff, we, um, you know, it looks like we're all in the same room, uh, but we're not. We'll shoot that weeks apart, like the Codex version. Uh, it sh we usually do me first because we just get, get me out of the way. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll do like Bork two weeks later, and then we'll do Clara, you know, on a Wednesday, and then Dad, we want to Friday. So it looks like we're all in the same room together talking to each other over the computers, but it's completely spread out, and it's only a testament to the actors knowing each other and uh, having a run through. Uh, to be able to gauge how people are going to do lines and stuff, and very good editing, that it looks like we're you know talking to each other at all. So basically, it's me just reading off camera with all the actor actors. Uh, I think a little bit of improv makes it in, and all, you know, especially Bork. You know, he comes up with some really funny lines for Bork. I am always like, hey, redo this monologue uh, <laughs> if you want, and sometimes he'll come up with better stuff, and I'll be like, no, I wrote it better. <laughs> 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 but it's really collaborative and. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's really fun. Like, that's why I like it, filmmaking. Filmmaking is kind of like online gaming. It's like you're all getting together to make something. Or down a boss. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and everybody has a role. And everybody's just doing their very best work to make it happen. So, you yeah. know. Hello? I was wondering what the inspiration behind the, uh, the Guild song was. <laughs> and if you guys had a lot of fun filming that song. It's something that has been going around my circle of friends because it's just... It's really ironically funny. Oh, cool. Thank you. Um, so I like bad dandy's dance music. Um, I'll be finding a party to be playing Sir Mix a lot tonight, hopefully. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so basically when I was shooting, uh, when I was writing season three, I don't write easy. I'm like, oh, this is horrible. I hate this. Nobody's going to like, you know, very, very whiny and procrastinating. You know, oh, I need to check my Twitter. I need to, uh, you know, organize my closet by color and by chemise type. <laughs> so uh, when I was writing, I, w I would play music and I made a song list together. Actually on Twitter, I, I crowdsourced. I was like, what's your worst, you know, the worst best dance song? And I made like a mixtape uh, on mixtape.me or something like that. And that was like, oh, I love this kind of music. And that combined with an artist named Jeff Carlisle, who uh, was a volunteer who was just like, I want to draw something for you. And he did a print. Um, of us in our avatar costumes. That was the first time. It was like eight. It was last BlizzCon. He did that for us, and he's actually here. He's in the artist alley. I just want to see him actually. And uh, I was like, oh, that's really cool. And then, so uh, this is a long story. And then <laughs> um, uh, somebody got hired to do like some superhero or something that I was like, oh, why did I audition for that? You know, typical Hollywood stuff. And I, I realized like Hollywood might not ever hire me to be a superhero. And I got really sad. <laughs> but I want to be a superhero. And I was like, well, I'll just be my own superhero, damn it. That's what I do. <laughs> so uh, then I just had the idea of doing a Bad 90s dance song in our Avatar costumes. So um, I came with the title, Do You Want to Date My Avatar? Uh, and I um, emailed Jed Whedon, who was one of the writers and composers of Dr. Horrible. And not thinking that he'd want to do it, because Judd's, I don't know, you might have seen something he did. He's like the coolest dude on, 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 the, on the planet. He's like, yeah, you know, hey, let's have a drink. You know, that kind of guy. <laughs> the guy you're never going to be cool enough to be in the corner of the bar with, but you know he's having a good time. <laughs> he's cool friends. So um, I, 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 I thought that maybe he would like make it cooler than I could, because it's going to be so geeky, obviously, because of the, of the lyrics. And I knew it could just become a sketch. And I was like, well, if he has time, and he was totally cool with it. So I sent him some lyrics. Four hours later, on a Sunday, he sent me the chorus back. Like a re he worked, reworked some of the lyrics, 
and gave me like the track and I was like, are you kidding? Like, and when I heard it, I was like, okay, bad dancing. <laughs> like, I'm gonna rock it out. <laughs> so uh, that's how that happened. And then I wrote the rest of the lyrics and sent them off. And I, you know, I came up with wonderful lines of the melody. He would work some lyrics. It was very collaborative, but he most did, you know, almost all the music and I did almost all the lyrics. And that's how it happened. And yeah, we had a great time filming it, you know. We were, it was my birthday, and I was like, I have to get up at six and put some fake hair on. And I was like, oh, it's my birthday, I'm a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, best birthday ever. Hi, that was awesome. Uh, it's really cool to talk to you right after watching you on the screen. I have this idea, it's not really a question, more of a comment. Is it, okay, is it possible, trust me, is it possible that you guys this season or next season can have an episode where you all go to, a, I don't know, a science fiction and fantasy convention? <laughs> I've had that idea before. Um, you know, budget-wise, it would be very difficult uh, to be able to pull something like that off. Like, honestly, I didn't even realize it. I wrote the script for season three, and it was 103 pages, which is like 10 pages more than season two, okay. which is fine. But uh, I just didn't really think about some, some production aspects as far as like how much money we actually had. Uh, <laughs> which was not, not good. You know, the producer should come before the writer. Let's learn. Um, so we had a lot of exterior, you know, so six exterior shots, and a lot of them were less like, "Hey, did you see the cops?" Okay, <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I have to say it, but a lot of it was Ill illegally filmed. The thing about the games. <laughs> I mean, the thing about LA is that people are a lot more alert. Like, I know some guys, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Chad Vader. He's, uh, it's a web series on YouTube, and those guys are awesome, and Chad Vader works in, a, you know, he works in a grocery store. And I was like, how'd you guys get a grocery store? Like, nowhere in LA would we be able to shoot in a grocery store. He's like, yeah, we just went out with the camera, and they opened the grocery store for us, because they live in Minnesota. So it's actually easier to film outside of LA, or like some big, you know, movie savvy place because they're like, hey, you know, in LA people will be like, oh, there's a film crew. I got a radio. I'm going to turn it up really loud and extort money from them. I mean, people <laughs> will do that. I've seen it happen many times on a set. And then you just say you're doing like, you know, a, 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 an AIDS PSA. And then they get guilty and leave. <laughs> 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 Oh, so uh, yeah. So basically, uh, I forget the question, but it was. Uh, <laughs> but it was fun. Oh, the game store. So basically, the game store. We had to actually, you know, go to GameStop and like, please let us shoot here. You know, enable us to shoot here and help us. Make people shoot these, so that was actually um, not like you know crazy product placement. That was like necessity, or we're shooting in an alley. <laughs> so it was pretty cool that we were able to work that out. <laughs>